So probably the most important aspect of digital scrapbooking and Photoshop elements is working with layers. And you're probably already kind of figuring out how to use layers, but let's talk a little bit about the basics of layers. If you notice down here, you have all these different icons. The first one is your layers icon. This is gonna bring up all your layers that you have inside of a page. Right now, we don't even have a page open, so you don't see any layers yet. But let's go in and go File and New and Blank File. Let's go with a regular scrapbooking size paper. I'm going to fill it with white instead of the background color because I want it to be white. Click on OK. Now we've got a piece of paper here. Now we're going to start adding layers on top. Right now you'll notice that you can click on layers and there's only this background layer. Well, if I wanted to maybe add a shape, let's go to our shapes, which is right here underneath the drawing area. And you have all kinds of different shapes. You have, you know, when you click on this very first one, you have the heart shape. The second one is your rectangle shape. Third one is the rounded rectangle and so on and so forth. So let's start out with some basic shapes just to kind of give it a really easy uh, concept. Let's use the star first. I'm going to pick a color from my color wheel. I always pick it from my color wheel here. Let's go, of course, with a yellow star. I'm going to keep that as is, and I'm just going to click and drag, and there's my shape. Now over here to the right-hand side, you will see a little thumbnail layer that indicates a shape. Now you can move your layers all over the place. So that what makes it really, really easy to maneuver when you're making digital scrapbook pages. You can also hide layers by clicking on the little eyeball right next to the actual layer itself. Let's add another shape. So I'm going to go into my shapes. Let's go with a rectangle. I'm going to choose maybe a red. I hope it doesn't change the color. It did. So that's what I was kind of afraid of. I thought, well, maybe since it's not on the same layer. But what it did was it went ahead and changed the color of the actual star. So let's go Control Z. Let's add a new layer. So go up into the Layers panel and see where it has that little dog ear. Create a new layer. Now I can create a new rectangle with that red rectangle. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. And I'm going to go back to my shapes. Let's go with a circle this time. I'm going to try another color, maybe a green, keeping it simple. And I can hold down my shift key to make a perfect circle if I want to. Or if I release that shift key, I can make an oblonged circle as well, or an oblong shape. Okay, elliptical, I guess is what I should say. Now we have all these different layers here. Let's just make it really simple. You can take those layers and you can move them to different spots. So see how I'm taking this red rectangle. I am also going to double click on where it says shape two and type in red rectangle. Spell it right. And then I click on the enter key and it will name that layer. If I want to click on the next one where it says shape three, double click on the word shape three, I can call this green circle, and so on and so forth. I can also right click on it, and I can choose rename layer. If I forget how to name it, I can always right click on that layer and rename layer, and then it will go ahead and allow me to type it in. Yellow star. Now, I don't always practice what I preach, but if you can try to name your layers, that's always the organizing way. The best way to organize your layers is to name them, of course. Now remember, you can also take down the opacity of your layers. So let's just say we're on our top layer. See where it says opacity? You can take this little slider, slide it to the left, see how it's taking down the opacity of that layer. 
I can just say, put it back up if I want to. I can also mess around with the blending modes, which we'll, we'll talk about that later. But you can try and see what the effect does. I don't know if it affects it. Yes, it does affect shapes. So um, I'm using my arrow keys to point down to see what kind of effect it does on it. Nine times out of 10, or probably 99 times out of 100, I will keep it set to normal. But you can play around with those. Karen does have a class that's called blending modes. It's probably somewhere, I don't even know which year it was, maybe two years ago, or she may be doing another one here shortly. Uh, I'm working with blending modes a lot, but right now let's just stick with normal. Another thing that you can do is you can trash these layers. So if you don't want the yellow star, you can drag it and drop it to the trash can and it will be deleted. You can also right click on a layer and remove that layer as well. So right clicking and then deleting layer. It will remind you, or you can say don't show again. I will go ahead and have it remind me just in case. I say yes, let's delete that layer. So now we're back to just one layer. Now you can have lots and lots of layers. I think I have one um, file that has like 55 layers or something like that. So I don't know if there is a top on how many layers you could have, but you probably won't exceed that. So now that you kind of know a little bit about how the layering system works, let's move on and start bringing in some photos and layering those photos as well. Thanks so much for watching this quick snippet from Photo Editing and DigiScrap Academy. If you would like to see more of these short videos, be sure to check all the various ways to stay connected. I'll be posting them right here or here. I'm not really sure which, which direction they're posting, but so be, be sure to hit that pause button and jot these down. I'm Michelle Stelling with the National Association of Digital Scrapbookers, and thanks so much for watching.